Looking at some of the recent comments regarding Manuel Lanzini and Felipe Anderson in particular, got me thinking because I'm adamant that they're good players. Nobody will convince me otherwise. I think Lanzini certainly uh, has the capacity to be our best player. I think um, Anderson is, is our most threatening. But I think why, why are these two players not thriving? Now, there's lots of suggestions as to why. So the Anderson one that gets trotted out. Anderson doesn't want to be here anymore. Anderson isn't bothered. Um, I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. And also, I don't see that. I see him trying stuff. It's just not particularly coming off. The other one I hear is that now Lanzini has signed his new contract. He's not bothered anymore. Again, I just don't think that's the case. And the more I look at it, the more I search for answers... I just wonder if the one simple answer might just be staring us in the face. And that is that those two players would thrive in an attacking team. And quite frankly, at the moment, we're not an attacking team. Now, as I, before I do in this video, I thought I'm just going to go and check out, check out the stats and have a look at things. Now, stats don't tell everything, granted. But a pretty damn good indicator of whether you're an attacking team or not would be whether you have shots on goal. Surely that's... The, the end game, whether you're an attacking team that plays pass move, whether you're an attacking team that plays long ball or headers in the box, surely the end game is going to be attempts on goal. And having looked at it, I, I have to come to the conclusion, conclusion that we are not an attacking team. Now, in a second, that's got to come down to the ethos of the manager. I don't want to get onto that in a second, but just, just before I do, just while staying on Lanzini and Anderson. When I went to the Crystal Palace game, uh, my friend came with me who's a Crystal Palace fan. Now, he watches all the West Ham Crystal Palace games, and we've we've led them a merry dance over recent seasons. West Ham have, have basically mullered Palace. And one of the chief architects in those mullerings has been Manuel Lanzini. One of the initial questions during the game from him to me was... Why is Lanzini playing so deep? Why is Lanzini playing there? Why isn't Lanzini playing as attacking midfielder? And I said to him, well, I think he is meant to be an attacking midfielder. I don't know why he's playing there. The other question was, why is Anderson at left back so much? And obviously, you have to take these things into account because these are just observations by someone that doesn't watch West Ham. And he's wondering why our players are taking up such defensive positions. And I think that was particularly pertinent, bearing in mind we were playing a defensive team. But you can't base all of it on the Crystal Palace game. And I get that. So, having looked at some stats and looking back, more often than not, we will have less shots on goal than our opposition. And I just think, well, this is not what, what was said on the tin. This was not what was advertised in the brochure. This is certainly not what we thought we were buying into. And if you cast your mind back to when Pellegrini was appointed, we just, I was going to say suffered David Moyes, but that's harsh because David Moyes um, fulfilled his mandate in that respect. He kept us up and I think we finished in 13th, but the football was, was dire. He did get an out of playing, granted, um, switched him to a striker. And I think he, he and his team would leave West Ham with their heads held high. But the football was not nice. It was low possession, very, very low possession and low attempts on goal. And in the, the possession sense, we have improved. There were a couple of games, I think, I remember with um, with Moyes where we had 27% possession or something like that, which is clearly, you know, nowhere near good enough. We've upped that. Not to the point where we're dominating teams with possession, I have to say. We're up to the point where it might be 52, 48, up to the point where we're, we're having more. But what are we doing with that possession? It is not manifesting itself in shots and attempts on goal. We're still not attacking team. But as I say, when Pellegrini came in, what did we think we were getting? I thought we were getting uh, an attacking manager. I really did. I thought the brand of football would get better. It has. But I certainly thought we would be getting a bit of bit of endeavour and a bit of adventure as well. I remember at Manchester City, and it was a constant, 
at least, and I understand these are different players, of course, but it was Sergio Aguero. They had Negredo as well, and they had Dzeko, and he was constantly bringing through these players on and on and, and sticking more and more strikers on and, and various combinations of them. He certainly seemed to be a manager who loved these strikers. We find, find now we find ourselves in a position where he almost seems to feel that maybe one striker is, a, is enough. We've got a striker in Halaire. And we're not playing to his strengths, well, I don't think so either. But this is not the first time that that has happened. Because, apparently, when Pellegrini came in, he really, really liked Chicharito. We had Chicharito there. Well, we didn't, he didn't play to Chicharito's strengths either. And we just seem to be leaving one striker isolated up top. And I just wonder, at what point did his ethos change? If we fast forward to... The recent summer transfer window. Paolo Fornals came in. We signed him early and we signed Fornals before he went off to play in the um, was in the, the under-21 tournament for Spain. He looked really good. Arguably their second best player after uh, Cabellos. And we all got very, very excited. We thought, ah, here's a player we can, we can get invested in. Here's a player we can get behind. We knew we were after um, a striker. Uh... It was rumoured the chase was about Maxi Gomez. Thank goodness that didn't happen, by the way. And eventually we got Halaire. And we were very excited. I, myself more than more than anybody about him. And we started drawing up our teams, of our, our ideas on what our starting eleven might be. Would he be playing alongside Lanzini? Would he be playing Anderson there? Would there be any room for Antonio in the team? Wilshere was having a very good pre-season, if you remember. It was almost mouth-watering. The team that on paper, it looked like we, we may well be able to have. And I think when we were talking about it, when we were doing our season's predictions, it seemed to be the mindset of a lot of people that they were thinking, oh, you know, we're going to win some 5-4 and we're going to lose some 5-4. I, I, certainly, I certainly thought that was going to be the case. And that's not to say that every game is going to be a nine-goal thriller. But we thought it was going to be a bit, a bit like basketball. They attack, you attack, we attack. They, you know, and and all of that sort of stuff. Um, we thought we'd ship a lot, and we thought we'd score a lot. But something's changed, and and the stats bear that out. The stats certainly suggest that. What is it that makes us not have many attempts on goal? What is it that is leaving Sebastian Ela so isolated? Why is it? that Lanzini is deeper than he should be. He's gone through his whole career with an ethos, Pellegrini, an attacking ethos of keeping possession, um, playing a high line, playing the offside trap. The idea of that is to have the, your back four quite high up the pitch. So basically, your team is in an elevated position. Basically, Pellegrini's philosophy is that his teams should be in the opposition half for the majority of the game. Something, something has changed here. Um, we're sitting increasingly deeper. Uh, our attacking players are increasingly either isolated or not in attack, attacking positioning. And if it was just one player, if it was just one of them, you could possibly say, well, OK, well, this player's off form. But And if it was just one game, you might be able to say the same thing. But there's something else going on. What is it? What what would it be that would that would make a man almost change the ethos and philosophy of a lifetime? As he suddenly got to West Ham and suddenly thought, well, actually, I can't do the things that I want to do at West Ham because West Ham aren't a big enough club, aren't a big enough, um, haven't got a big enough budget. I don't think that is the case because, again, that's not what we bought into when everybody said, oh, well, you know, Pellegrini did it at Man City and he was at Real Madrid, but he's not done it anywhere else. People say, oh, no, Malaga, Malaga. He, he got Malaga to um, European football on a very tight budget and so on and so forth. And everybody gave their examples as to why this was the man that could get the job done. But he seems to have lost his adventure. I don't want to say bottle, but he does seem to have lost his adventure. Um, too often, the opposition teams are out scoring us, they're out shooting us, certainly. And I just worry that particularly someone like Sebastian Hilaire, if this wasn't 
what the, the brand of football or the attacking football that we as fans were promised or bought into. Also makes me wonder, is this what the players bought into? Did, did Sebastian Allaire honestly think that he was going to be playing up front on his own? Which he is. Support is late arriving to him as well. There's no one up close to him, which we need to do. I wonder if Felipe Anderson... When he was signing, because he chased him. He chased Felipe Anderson for a long, long time. I wonder if he bought into this um, attacking ethos, which has just not happened. So the question is, why are we not attacking? Because we're not. Not as much as was promised anyway. And if we're not, are we going to start attacking again? And if that's the case, when? And also begs the other question, why did we stop? I don't know. I don't have the answers. Um... But I'll tell you what, we've got a game coming up against Sheffield United, which is looking increasingly more squeaky bum. We'll have a preview for that going up on the um, on the main channel tomorrow. Today's Wednesday, yeah, tomorrow. We're actually doing a cup of tea. Myself and Gio are doing a cup of tea this evening. Um, what are we going to do? How is he going to approach this? Because if, if he approaches it in the way that we approach Crystal Palace, he approaches it in the way that we approached Everton... What are, what are we going to do? Are we going to sit back against Sheffield United and invite them on to us? Um, we better have some endeavour because they're a very, very disciplined back line. Anyway, I'll get into all that in the preview. Um, let me know what you think. Am I, have I got it wrong? Have we been attacking? Have we been unlucky? It doesn't seem like we've been hitting the post a bundle of times or people are getting last-ditch interceptions or tackles in. Just seem to be playing in a, in a pragmatic, boring sense. Is it better than Moyes? Yeah, we keep possession for longer, but we're certainly not. Um, we don't. We don't look like we're going to win any game five four at any time soon. That's for sure.